Yo, what is up everyone? It is the morning of the season two release for Diablo 4, and I've spent most of the morning and into the delay building what I think is going to be one of the most powerful burn builds for Sorcerer in the game. And it's really time for dot builds to shine. And that's for a couple of reasons, but uh, some of the main ones are that damage over time, abilities and aspects and everything related to them have slowly and consistently been getting buffed since the release of the game because they haven't been stacking up to the vulnerability and crit builds that had their own damage buckets. Now with these major changes to damage buckets, which we'll get into in a minute, um, crit and vulnerability are essentially capped at how much they can multiply. And so that's going to make um, damage over time builds, which can't crit. And so that's why they were at an inherent disadvantage is you were missing an entire bucket of the equation multiplier. If you didn't build crit, if you went to dot build now that's capped at 50%. So we're missing out on a maximum of 50%, but there's much more stuff that we have access to now with the vampiric powers, the new uniques, and some of the changes they made to the other aspects. Uh, that are really going to enable a burn build to hopefully stomp. And so keep in mind, this is all theory crafted at this point because I'm making it before the season actually releases. And so I will be putting this build to the test, possibly streaming some of it. And I expect it to perform very well, but there will obviously be some changes as I get into the game, learn more about the vampire powers, you know, figure out how drastic these damage bucket changes are, um, how good resistances are now, all this new kind of stuff. And so this build is built specifically on those changes though. I, I basically looked at every change that affects Sorcerer and Dots and all that is taken into account while putting this together. And so I'm gonna just do a quick overview of the different aspects of the build real quick. And then we will dive into um, the gear and skills. I'll go through all this, then we'll go through the skill tree, then we'll go through the Paragon board. But quick overview of the build. Our skills are gonna be Firebolt as a generator. And late game, we might be able to drop this for something else if we don't need a generator, but Firebolt got a really sick buff uh, to where it's going to increase the burning damage we deal by 25% for three seconds. So we're going to give it a go. And then Incinerate's going to be our main pump. Incinerate got a huge buff where the ramp up is two seconds instead of four seconds. So the ramp up for Incinerate's literally cut in half. We're running Frost Nova for guaranteed vulnerability in CC, Flame Shield for our out, Hydra, uh, as our summon. So this is basically going to be a hybrid summoner burn build. And so we're going to have two Hydras out at all times. And Hydra also got a fat buff to its upgrade where uh, it burns for 60% instead of 12% now. And so a couple huge buffs on the main abilities we're running. And then we're running Inferno with our ult. And this is going to have some really nice synergy with our other abilities and some of the vampire powers we have access to. And then for enchantments, we are running Frozen Orb and Firewall. Um, and so none of our skills are going to be enchanted. We're going to have separate enchanted skills and it's going to be auto casted frozen orbs, which we're going to be able to get a dick load off with incinerate. Um, and then we are going to get automatic firewall spawning under everything that's taking burn damage and stuff's going to be taking a lot of burn damage from firebolt incinerate hydra and then flame shield and inferno when they're up. And so Five out of six of our abilities are doing burn damage, so Firewall should be proccing quite often under enemies, continuing the burn stack, and all that's leading up to the reworked combustion as of a few months ago, and so this is much better than it was at launch, or perhaps since the last time you played, where burning effects now deal a flat 20% increased damage instead of the 2% buildup, and then we're going to get an additional 2% on top of that per unique source of burning. And then I'm going to come back to the vampire powers real quick. Let's just take a real quick look at the skill tree. And I just went through each of the abilities, but you can kind of see where the points are distributed here. Um, we have a couple passives rolling that I didn't mention. Elemental attunement, one point in here, one point in line of the elements, three in mana shield, three in conjuration mastery. The only ones we're maxing out are incinerate and hydra. Um, and then three in crippling flames. And then these three passives maxed and then combustion. So for our Paragon board, we are getting uh, six boards for six glyphs total. And the dope thing about burn and fire builds is there's actually more glyphs available specific to burning and fire than there are for any other element or any other build, it seems like. And so we're really maxing out value on the glyphs in this build. And so basically we are starting on the starting board and we're grabbing Enchanter uh, with all this optimized for intelligence and my standard start with this non-physical damage is going to be uh, basically even more viable than it was before with crit and vuln uh, getting pretty massive nerfs 
uh, the, the flat value you are going to get out of this enchanter glyph and um, this 105% non-physical damage available on the enchantment board first early in the game uh, is going to vastly outweigh bonuses you are going to get from other boards and other glyphs. And because anything above 50% crit damage and anything above 20% vol damage is now going in the same bucket as uh, this non-physical damage anyways, we want to always take the highest value we can get now instead of having to weigh those as sort of multipliers in different buckets. And so we're going from our starting board, getting 70 intelligence around this node to max out our enchanter glyph, going up to our control glyph, and we're gonna have a lot of good CC uh, with Frost Nova and then Frozen Orb giving chilled, Frost Nova giving frozen, and then we have our passive Crippling Flame, so we're gonna get immobilized on a lot of our burn abilities, and then when immobilized wears off, enemies are slowed, so we're gonna get a lot of value um, out of the control glyph, and it just has a really high base multiplier on it as well, so we are getting all the decks we can around here, scooping all this non-physical damage here, all this non-physical damage here, working our way over to our next board, which is Flame Feeder, and here we are grabbing the Flame Feeder Glyph, so this is gonna scale with decks, and uh, gonna do increased damage of burning targets. We're grabbing all the decks possible around here, coming up and grabbing this extra burning and damage reduction, and then coming down from the burning instinct board into the searing heat board, just through the corner to scoop the glyph. And we're leveraging the pyromaniac glyph here uh, with the fire boost uh, on the bonus to these two fire nodes specifically. And we're just rolling through here, also picking up this additional multiplier and then rolling into the Elemental Summoner board, and we're just scooping a little bit of Conjuration damage here to help our Hydra, and we're grabbing the Elemental Summoner node, working our way over to Torch, and then all this optimized for Will, and again, a little bit of extra uh, Conjuration damage and Resistance. And then finally, working our way over to our six board, Icefall, again, mainly for the Socket, uh, but we are going to get this little bit of extra damage to chilled and we're going to have a lot of stuff chilled from all of our frozen orbs procking off of our incinerate and so that's the overall board there's going to be a link for this in the description if you want to check it out now getting into the gear and the vampiric powers i think one of the things that's really going to make this build pop in endgame is this x files corroded signet and so this is going to be great for any dot build but especially for a burn build where we're stacking everything into a, into fire um it's going to have a lucky hit where enemies have a 50% chance to erupt and uh, deal some amount of damage, uh, fire damage to nearby enemies. And so because we're gonna have a bunch of different types of fire dots stacked, uh, this should be proccing quite a bit. And that's going to synergize very nicely with what we're gonna try to get uh, for our weapon, which is the only other really unique I have slotted in this right now. And that's gonna be Flame Scar, basically just because of how insanely strong this is for Incinerate. And so you're going to get an additional effect on your incinerate where you shoot out embers, um, basically blasting everything around you. And then you're also going to get ranks of incinerate on the wand itself, which is just nuts because uh, we're also going to get ranks of incinerate on our gloves. And so we're just going to have a fatty, uh, you know, probably like rank 13 or so, depending on how many are on this. They also boosted the amount of ranks of incinerate on this. That's one of the Patch changes here is Flame Scar uh, ranks of Incinerate of Fix increase. So we might get to like a rank 14 or 15 Incinerate, which would be fucking nuts. Um, okay, so talking about the vampire powers, this Bathe in Blood one is going to be money. So while channeling a skill, you form a pool of blood beneath you. Uh, while, channeling, while channeling a skill in the pool, your channeled skills deal 40% increased damage and gain 30% damage reduction. A pool can only form once every eight seconds. So Basically, every eight seconds when we start to channel incinerate, we're going to get this blood pool below us. And then while we're in the pool, our incinerate is going to be dealing 40% increased damage. And we are going to be getting 30% damage reduction at the same time. And then second thing that's going to absolutely rip is this flowing veins. And this is going to let us deal 60% increased damage over time to enemies that are moving or affected by a vampiric curse. So anything running towards us is going to be, have this turned on or anything affected by a vampiric curse. And the way we are getting Vampiric Curse is from this Coven's Fangs. And so our Conjuration skills are going to have 52% increased damage on crowd control enemies. So everything that we talked about that's frozen by our Frost Nova, chilled by our Frozen Orb, immobilized by any of our fire spells, and then slowed after the immobilized from our aspect of Singe Extremities uh, is going to be taking 52% increased damage from our ranked up Hydra. 
And then our Hydra has a low lucky hit, but it attacks super fast. And so it's going to have a bunch of rolls uh, to proc this 30% chance of inflicting the Vampiric Curse on enemies. So while enemies are moving, or if we get our Hydra to proc it, uh, we are going to have this 60% increased dot damage. And I'm going to have to play with these, so these might change around a little bit. But this is basically you know, what I think is going to be a pretty strong setup early. And so uh, the, the fourth one is going to be Anticipation. And so this is going to give our giant uh, damage clump immobilized blast with Inferno 20% CDR. And then we're also going to get 12% increased damage on its actual damage uh, for every uh, nearby enemy that's burning. And so this just seems to have some really nice synergy with, with Inferno specifically and with the fact that we have everything lit on fire all the time. And then Feed the Coven, if you were going to switch one out, I think you could probably switch this for something else. I don't know exactly how hard it's going to be to get these values. I think um, because this only costs one skull, uh, it's a little bit of like a, you know, a weaker one or whatever. But I think it's still really strong for this build. But if we were able to get more of these and switch this out, uh, this Accursed Touch one could be really strong as well. And that's just going to give us a much higher uptime on this Vampiric Curse on enemies. And it's going to make the Souls from the Curse deal increase damage as well and give enemies that have it a chance to spread. And so if we did take this one, it would put our little, uh, whatever this vampiric power is at 14. And so I'm not sure how reasonable that is. And so for right now I have it, um, you know, on this other one, where was it on feed the coven? But I think later on that could be switched to switch to a curse touch or really any of these other ones that you think might be viable, but that seems like the best, uh, Next best one to me. Okay, so that's kind of the main setup with the skills, enchantments, uh, paragon board, and then vampiric powers. And so let's take a look at the aspects we're gonna be running. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, the main unique we're gonna want is flame scar, just because of how insane it makes incinerate. And then we are also going to be end game. It's gonna be much later in the game because I think this is from like a farmable unique boss, but we are gonna be going for our main unique, which is gonna be this X-Files Corroded Signet. And so actually both this and Flame Scar are going to be pretty damn important to this build to really, you know, make it top tier. So for aspects, we're going with some of the stronger defensives. Disobedience got a huge buff where it can go up to 66% armor now. And keep in mind that armor doesn't give uh, resistance to non-physical anymore because they buffed resistances. So armor is just armor against physical. So we are going to take this uh, basically to cover our physical resistance because all of our intelligence and a lot of our Paragon board is building into elemental resistance. And so we want at least a little bit of armor to survive when we do take physical. Then we're taking Exploiter's Aspect because we have a lot of CC uh, and it's just OP. And then Serpentine Aspect for the increased Hydra duration and the additional Hydra spawn. And every time we have our two Hydras out, we are going to be getting... 6% base increased damage from Conjuration Mastery, and we're really going to prioritize getting ranks of that on our necklace. And so if we get a plus three on our necklace, we're gonna have, uh, this is gonna double. And so just getting your two Hydras out right off the bat is gonna give you a 12% multiplier uh, on all your damage. An aspect of might on our pants because we are going to be whipping out Firebolt as a generator and also for the uh, additional burning damage from the upgrade. And then aspect of singe extremities. And so this is going to make it so when any, anytime we get an immobilized proc from our crippling flames from any of our pyromancy skills, uh, this is going to make it so once that immobilized wears off, they're slowed for four seconds. So we're going to get access to uh, our control glyph and all of our other stuff that works off of CC, uh, basically for an extra four seconds um, after that immobilized drops. So for our necklace, we are going with Aspect of Frozen Orbit, and this is going to help us get uh, a little more vulnerability, but it's going to make our Frozen Orb enchantment just quite a bit better because instead of getting a single explosion on every proc, you're going to get two additional, so three total explosions every time it procs. It's going to be procking a lot off of Hydra. It's going to be procking even more off of Incinerate, and you can actually, um, you don't have to hold Incinerate. You can like, because it's a slower ramp up, because it's a quicker ramp up now, you can channel it, move, channel it, move, channel it, move it every time you start to channel it. And thanks to my buddy, uh, Esoteric Raz, who was running this really cool Incinerate Frozen Orb build uh, last season, uh, they removed the cost to start channeling Incinerate. So you can literally tap, move, tap, move, tap, move, and trigger a bunch of Frozen Orb procs because every time you tap it, it is going to 
basically uh, count as a casted spell and every one of those is going to have a 30 percent chance to launch an orb and so we're going to be getting orbs off hydro we're going to be getting a lot of orbs off incinerate and every one of those is going to blow up uh, two additional times for bonus chill bonus vulnerability and this little bit of extra damage and then we're going aspect of control again just because it's op and we have uh, a lot of these conditions met with our immobilize from pyromancy spells and our freeze from frost nova i think when you get your x files unique ring uh this is probably going to be the one i drop out we're gonna have to see but um, i think these other ones are a little too high value with what we're trying to do um, but it'd probably be between frozen orbit and control and i'll probably end up dropping control but we'll have to see with that and for our second ring we're going with aspect of engulfing flames and this also got a pretty sick buff uh, where instead of just being this um instead of just being the more health than their than their uh total life we get this uh 10 to 30 percent if they're below 50 percent health or a much bigger uh burn if they're affected by more damage over time than their total life and so engulfing flames got a bit better and since we're burning everything we're definitely gonna be running that and then our final one is going to be aspect of conflagration uh when channeling incinerate your burning damage increased by up to 40 percent and so we're basically running uh, all of the burn aspects with some defensives and some utility um and frozen orbit to enable uh, more chill and vulnerability and freeze potentially so then for gems we're ripping damage over time uh on our weapons we're going to be running max life in our armor and we're going to be running resistance in our jewelry and i expect this to be kind of the standard setup obviously this one would change if you're not running a dot build but i think most people will still be running ruby in armor and likely be trying uh diamond in jewelry if you find that your elemental resistance is good because of all the stuff we have on our paragon board and stuff uh, you might want to end up switching these to skulls if your physical damage is lacking and you need a little more armor that's something we're just going to have to see and so we've pretty much gone through everything at this point uh, i hope um all that was sort of clear and uh um you can make sense of it but i, I think the last thing probably to do is go through the item prioritization or the affix prioritization so these are this is basically um, what I would prioritize uh, on each of the pieces, top four. So Helm, keep in mind, intelligence is a lot better than it used to be because intelligence still has its own group in the damage equation. And so while crit and vuln um, sort of got capped and then anything over the cap gets moved over to the fourth bucket with all the other stuff, intelligence still exists on its own in the third bucket. And so I think intelligence should be higher priority than it ever has been for you before and you can see it's not top prio but it's on most of these slots somewhere unless there's um you know things like amulet or gloves yeah, that's on gloves but you know things with really specific things that are sort of take priority over that little bit of extra damage that intelligence offers you another really high prio thing for me pretty much always is max life and that's just going to help with our survivability late game a shitload um, and we're picking up a little bit of damage reduction but we have a lot of damage reduction built into our build uh, with our armor here. Um, the damage reduction we're getting from Aspect of Might, we're getting 30% damage reduction when, our, in, when we're in our pool um, from Channeling Incinerate. And we're getting, uh, at the end, we are gonna be having another 25% uh, damage reduction depending on how much mana we're missing. And we also have a lot of different um, damage reduction nodes through here, uh, like damage reduction from enemies that are burning and such like that. And so damage reduction from elites. So we have a good bit of damage reduction, so not gonna be quite as high of prio uh, for affixes, but intelligence and max life, kind of wanna grab them wherever you can get them. And then specific uh, roles for specific slots on Helm, we really want ranks of Hydra. And I think life on kill is a really good one to supplement our survivability uh, besides you know max life and the intelligence role. And then for chest armor, uh, we are going with um, max life and intelligence as top prio, and then just any of the damage ones below that. So all damage, fire damage, and then pyromancy skill damage would be below this. Gloves, we really need ranks of incinerate. So you wanna get a max roll of ranks of incinerate, like highest prio for sure right here, and then damage over time is gonna be next, and then intelligence, and then I just have this lucky hit chance to restore primary resource I'm honestly not sure how good our mana is going to be that's part of the reason why I put this feed of the coven in here uh, for the extra bit of mana gen we could possibly get off of our double hydra shooting hella fast um, but likely we're going to need a little more so I have 
lucky hit here. And then I also have another one here if we could get it on our offhand for double lucky hit to restore primary resource. Pants, we need ranks of fireball, highest priority, then damage reduction, then max life, first survivability, then intelligence for more damage. Boots, move speed is pretty much always top prio for me on boots. And then rank of frost nova, then intelligence, then mana cost reduction. So for amulet, we really want endless pyre passive and conjuration mastery passive ranks together on the same neck. That's going to be pretty specific and maybe challenging to find, but it is possible, especially if you get a max roll of one of them and you can re-roll uh, another slot to possibly get the second one. Um, but besides that, fire damage over time and move speed are also going to be really high prio on neck. And then for rings, we are prioritizing max life damage over time, fire damage, and then damage to burning enemies. Kind of obvious there. And then weapon. This is basically if you don't have flame scar yet, or if you haven't gotten it, um, this is what I would prioritize on weapon. First intelligence, then damage over time, then core skill damage, and then damage to burning enemies. And then for offhand, um, intelligence, life on kill, and then both these lucky hits, one to heal and one to restore primary resource. And so you can see we have nothing built into the crit because we cannot crit with dots. And then we have a little bit of stuff into vulnerability because we're kind of a little bit of vulnerability uptime with our Nova and our frozen orb. But because now the multiplier caps at 20% and everything else goes into the fourth damage bucket with everything else, uh, you know, it's not nearly as high prio to to get that stuff. And some of the affixes are a little higher on Vuln. So like if you can find you know, a Vuln damage affix that's a higher value than some of these other ones like damage to burning or stuff, it might be worth picking up, but consider you'll probably have a lot higher uptime on damage to burning than you will on Vuln. And so, yeah, it's basically, it's honestly, it's interesting. I'm not sure how I feel actually yet uh, about the damage bucket changes. It seems like a little extreme to me where the numbers people were seeing because those existed as their own multipliers, like people were getting, you know, the crit multiplier up to like three, four or 500% and then, you know, Voln similar. And so, you know, you're taking that down to 50% capped and you're putting everything else that gets added with um, all these other damage increases before it gets multiplied in this other bucket and same with Voln. And so I think we're gonna see a pretty drastic drop to like top end damage late game. Um, but I do think the fact that they've been, and they said they were gonna like tune the mobs to um, consider that, right? But all this dot stuff is the same as it has been, if not better. So they didn't nerf any dot stuff. They've been slowly buffing it actually, basically since the launch of the game. And so now, you know, I think is really gonna be the time where dot builds shine for all classes, but for Sorcerer specifically, we have a ton of really cool stuff uh, with burns. And so, yeah, this is basically my best uh, idea so far of what a really powerful burn build for Sorcerer could look like. Again, totally theory crafted. Uh, I love making builds. And so I do this stuff a lot, uh, but you know, I, I'm really going to have to test it to see. And so I'm going to be testing this build pretty rigorously for the first few days of the season to really see how it feels. Um, and then if everything's going good and I'm having fun and the season's good and I'm and I'm enjoying it, uh, I will likely play this deeper into end game and we'll make an updated build guide at that point uh, where we'll make some probably just fine tuning adjustments here and there. And we'll see how crazy that X-Files ring actually is if I can get it uh, with this flame scar to, you know, really bring this build to like a top tier uh, DPS build for Sorcerer. So. Hope that was useful. If you want to see any of this, I got a link in the description. Uh, you can just click on it yourself and, you know, uh, drive around and check it all out. But, uh, but yeah, besides that, um, good luck in the new season. Have fun being a vampire and I'll see y'all out there. Peace.